Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Diane saying hello to you from the British Virgin Islands. Yes, it's look at those clouds. <laughs> yes, they're dark today. Let's see what they produce later on today or even this morning, but uh Good morning everybody it's just good to be alive and well today and to come to you this morning with another word of encouragement as we start our day you know uh, love <laughs> here to talk about love love today love and we are so guided by the Word of God on this subject but I'm coming this morning from the angle of what we're being taught in 1st Corinthians chapter 13 1st Corinthians chapter 13 and it's not gonna be the entire chapter even though persons can read the entire thing it's a familiar passage of scripture but this morning we just want to talk a little bit about the first three verses so first Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 3 and basically uh, you can follow along um, I'm reading from the King James Version good morning sister Jacqueline Richardson how are you happy to have you with us this morning uh, good morning Sandrine good morning how are you doing Okay, it's always good to have you on, you know, uh, night or day, you're there. <laughs> well, God bless you today. But 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 3 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I'm reading from the King James Version, we can put the word love right there where we see the word charity. Have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gifts, well, the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity or love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity or love, it profited me nothing. No. It's very important for us to understand what Paul is saying here to the Corinthians. If we followed along from chapters 1 all the way down, you notice that Paul had to deal with a lot of different things in the Corinthian church. And just before chapter 13, he dealt with spiritual gifts. And he laid some of them out right there and gave certain instructions. And, you know, he was encouraging the church not to fight or to consider the members of the body like some would believe that some parts are more important and Paul was saying no every part every member of the body is important because you know the the eye cannot say if, if it's not a foot then you know it's it's not important or any other part whatsoever so now we're over into chapter 13 because it seems as if there was some problems there. there. There were some issues there. And you know Paul, he had to set things right. That's what he did as a servant of God. He instructed, he taught. And you know, there were times when he would even, uh, I would say, admonish them to live right do good and in chapter 13 of first corinthians there this is no different so he's instructing good morning auntie jay good morning linda good to have you ladies here this morning 
And in, in, in verse 1, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, I'll read it again. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, and we said we'll put the word love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. That's really saying if it doesn't really matter how gifted, you know, we, we are, we could speak with the most tongues, we could pretty much go about and preach and do all of that good stuff. If we do not have love, what we're really producing, what's coming from us, can be considered noise. Almost like an annoying noise and an annoyance. So if we are going to be doing the work of God, whatever it is that we're called to do, whatever ministry, whatever gifts we have, if we're not, if we're if our motivation, if we're not motivated by love, then it makes no sense. It profits us nothing. All right. So we have scenarios where we sometimes get up in our churches and we're, we're speaking in tongues and we're kicking over benches and chairs. You know, we're, we're, we're turning the place upside down with whatever behavior that some would display some of it is flesh yes and that is why we need discernment of spirits to understand what is really happening some of it is nothing but flesh persons just get uh, a bit emotional and they're all over the place now i'm not saying that the spirit doesn't demonstrate you know in different ways but we have to know when that stuff some of it is just flesh because you would have persons carry on like that and by the time they throw themselves you know on the ground and all kind of stuff and they get up to me when you are having an encounter a genuine encounter with god it's supposed to change you it's supposed to transform your life me, you, anybody, once we have an encounter, a real encounter with God, it's supposed to do something to us. It, it, it really is supposed to affect us in a positive way. I really believe that. I, I don't think, you know, when we uh, run to the altar um, for everything, because, you know, we say we, we need God and we need to confess and we need all of this. And someone prays for us. Sometimes people fall out and they get right back up and right back into the way that they were before. I, I, I'm not sure that's considered, you know, a genuine encounter. Because even though we are moving into perfection daily, we should be moving positively towards our, our, our growth in God we shouldn't be taking, you know, two steps forward and six steps back each and every time, tripping up over the same things over and over again. If that is the case, then we need deliverance and we should seek it. All right. I, I believe that we need deliverance and we should seek it. If we keep falling into the same sins, same situations, same mistakes, and I put mistakes in quotations because if you realize that, let's put it this way, the enemy is fighting you in the same areas over and over and over again. That calls for deliverance. That calls for supernatural intervention because we would not, if that is our situation, then we would not be able to be a good witness for Christ because people will look at our lives and say, well, it seems as if their life is not different from mine. So why should I follow God? Right? So even in cases where people would be in churches speaking in tongues, like, you know, First Corinthians uh, 13, 1 is saying, do I speak with tongues of men and of angels? Can you imagine that? That's some serious tongues right there. But if we don't have love, if love is not behind it all, it's like noise it's like noise and that's what this verse is saying today now verse 2 
And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. You hear that? The gift of prophecy, you know, we're talking, yeah, that's, an, that's a serious gift right there, right? All the gifts are important. But we're talking about the gift of prophecy. There are persons who are so gifted and they would just prophesy. And here my Bible is telling me that even when that gift is present in someone, if the motivation if the motive is not love, it is nothing. It's like saying the anointing without love is a nothing. You know, that, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a simple way to put it. Anointing without love is a nothing. Because sometimes we know how to um, act. We know how to uh, do and say and be very impressive very very impressive but when it comes down to the love factor we, we come up short we, we are lacking and we have to check that because the word here is saying that it doesn't matter if we're so gifted if we don't have love we're nothing we could understand all mysteries you know the Lord reveals his secrets and you 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 get it you understand it and you you even share it whatever it is you do with you know everything like that you have all knowledge and all faith if your your faith could be as solid as a rock you could have the faith that move mountains that tell a mountain to move from where it is and go into the sea if your faith is that solid and you don't have love the bible is saying it's all nothing so it, it we we can impress yes we can we can preach we can speak we can teach listen if i am not motivated right now by love what i'm doing here is nothing it will profit me nothing and we have to be constantly reminded that love is the key. Love should be behind our actions, especially when we are ministering or working for God. We should be motivated by love. Verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, you hear that? Imagine, you give away all your stuff to feed the poor going through hurricanes and some people have and some don't and you take all your stuff and you give it away and you say you know what i want people to just have my stuff you know i'll do without i i will yeah i'll, I'll be fine i'll do without but if that's not motivated by love it profits nothing as good as it sounds and though I give my body to be burned, that is like you're a martyr, you know. You, you, are, <laughs> you, will, you, will, you will die for your beliefs. You will die for what you believe. You will, you will give it all up. Give up your body to be burned. And you don't have love. It profits nothing. Okay, so we're hearing it over and over that love is the key. The Bible says they will know that we are Christians by our love. How do we show love? How do we demonstrate? Because remember, love is an action word. It's not something we say only. It's okay. It's okay to tell people that we love them. It's okay to say it it's okay nothing is wrong with that but we have to make sure that those words are matching up with actions as a matter of fact action speaks louder than words because sometimes someone will not necessarily say they love you but the way they treat you says it all it's just the other way as well 
someone will say that they love you and the treatment is totally opposite of what their lips are saying so we need to genuinely love love from our hearts you know love people genuinely let that be the motivation of why we minister to them of why we want to help and it's not for an ulterior motive we see a lot of that going on today where people are saying a lot a lot of things i do this for the love of family i do it for the love of country i do it for the love the love the love but really how are we demonstrating that so that's the important thing so within the body of christ we would have i believe more peace more joy if we genuinely loved one another and we're not just doing ministry for a show if we genuinely loved i know of some great preachers great i mean when they preach sweat running them dig up the word them turn the word upside down but then meet them in the parking lot and it's a different story and you wonder if it's the same person that was just preaching and spitting fireballs you know you're having this encounter with and sometimes we say people are not perfect and we're human and in a moment of weakness remember what i said earlier if we find that we're struggling in the same areas over and over again seek help seek deliverance because it's going to hinder our ministry for god it's going to set us back it's going to turn some people off because we're we're saying one thing and we're doing another okay we can't we can't do that we we have to be consistent our words and our walk must be consistent so if i say i love my fellow human my fellow christian my fellow brethren then that has to be demonstrated it it has to be shown it i cannot just say it right and I, and i'm saying it over and over so that we can really get it this morning so today let us make a commitment that no longer will we do ministry based on ulterior motives what we can get whatever it is that is driving us to impress somebody to show off to show our abilities yes we have abilities and it will be seen it will come out but our motivation has to be love all right so not keeping you too long this morning more than to ask us to let's think let's think about this entire chapter there are some other instructions there's there where love is described you know love is not puffed up love is kind love is gentle love is patient and if we read it then we would get the full understanding of what this whole operating in love is all about okay so remember no it's not about how much tongues we speak in it's not about how well we can preach or teach it's not about any of that it's about our love quotient how well do we love during the times of ministry love has to be the motivation all right okay so i'm gonna wrap up and pray and just ask the lord to help us to be more loving uh, good morning rosanna nice to see you good morning kashina and good morning honorable madura canes happy belated birthday i uh, hope you had a wonderful day yesterday on your very special special occasion all right hope you enjoyed that so God bless you all, Sister J, Auntie J, love you, love you, love is the key, yes, Charnet, good morning, good morning, okay, oh, you're asking us to pray for the family of the students and students of Miss Darlene Henry in VG, 
oh that was okay okay that's the young lady that passed away okay i got a i got a message this morning about that so yes we will pray uh condolences to her family and friends and colleagues uh in this very difficult time you know so 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 young and just you know I'm telling you, God knows best. But yes, yes, Charnet, uh, we will say a prayer for the family. Um, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be as sensitive as possible right now, you know, in light of this request. But I'm telling you, the BVI has really been reeling from, you know, these deaths. It, it's diff They're caused by different reasons. But I'm just saying we have been in a state of mourning for months and I know people die every day, everywhere, but, you know, the BVI has just been feeling it and left, right and center, young, old, babies, you know, it, it's, it's just... It's just happening and we really need God. We, we need God and we need him to do something with us. We need him to do something with our lives here in the BVI. Every, people everywhere need the Lord. Yes, but on that note, um, I guess this request came in at this time just to uh, remind me to let people know that Jesus is coming soon. All right, Christ is coming soon. It sounds like a myth because we have been hearing it for so long, but he is in fact coming back. The, the signs are there. And I cannot, you know, uh, close this video today without inviting those who do not know Christ to get to know him. Get to know him get to know him now uh, uh Shernet is also mentioning that this is two in five days and i believe the first one was a uh, jamaican national I, I saw that i saw that headline you know we need we need the lord we don't know when we do, we just don't know when um none of us ha has signed a contract with god you know for him to give us the details of everything about our lives and the most we can do is just to live for him live for christ choose him all right choose him today now is the accepted time not later because we used to say here today gone tomorrow but i can tell you it's here today gone today all right people leave their homes and they have every intention of going back. Every intention of returning. They leave some stuff even undone and say, later when I get back, I will finish. I will complete it. Not knowing that their later would never come. And, you know, it, we, we try in, in churches nowadays, you know, people shun fire and brimstone messages it, it makes people afraid and fearful but i am saying this morning get yourselves right with god those who do not know him because whether you believe in hell or not it is real okay it, it that's a difficult that's a hard saying it is real and it is better to get to know Christ now than to take a chance and say when you get on your deathbed all right because that doesn't fly for some people some people die suddenly they never got a chance look at the people in that Guatemala volcano what they're saying is the the, the village that was right below the volcano the people never even stood a chance because the, the, it just erupted suddenly and violently and killed several people even before they got a chance to even realize what was happening. So I'm saying today, sudden, it can happen. All right? So we're going to pray. And I really admonish persons who do not know Christ to get to know him. Don't put it off anymore. Don't say tomorrow. You know that little song, tomorrow, tomorrow, I, I'll give my life tomorrow. No, tomorrow may never come. All right, so we must turn over our lives to Christ now. Now is the chance, now. 
nobody knows what the end of this day will bring we see the the clouds we see the rain set and there's a saying that I grew up hearing that if trouble set like rain then people would be prepared well I'm saying you know the the the, the time is now so we're not gonna wait to see any more signs we're gonna make the decision to follow Christ now okay so please take this word and think about it we talked about love earlier and now I'm just closing out by saying those who do not know the Lord get to know him yes I, I know that there are a lot of concerns because I interact with people a lot and there are like backsliders and so on and there are others who would say I, I don't I'm not into this God thing because you know too much hypocrite in church and you, you hear all of that but I'll tell you this, you know, sometimes, and let me say this before I close. Let me, <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me say this. You see this thing that we Christians are going around saying about nobody can judge us, only God can judge us. And we live our lives anyhow and don't understand that we are stumbling blocks to people who are seeking God. We better wake up and recognize yes every man will have to give an account for himself that is a fact we know that ultimately the person will not have an excuse but some of us in the church we are selfish we live our way our lives any old way and expect people to come to know Christ if 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 you are not living right, if I am not living right, if I, Diane, am not living right, I am not going to draw anybody to Christ. My lifestyle must be such that I draw people to Christ. I must not repel them. I must not push them away or become a stumbling block. Some people sit up in churches and they want to do what they want and then want to go and, and witness to people. It doesn't work so. Your lifestyle is the only Bible some people will read. Some people don't even know that their co-workers are Christians. You understand? Because every pan knock, the Christian run gone with them. It's always a good idea when the world makes a suggestion. But get that Christian to try and influence their unsaved co-workers or, or brother or family member or whatever. It's difficult. Why? Because we have not set ourselves apart in such a way that the Lord can use our lives to be an example to others. So let us fix up ourselves, Christians. Let us live right so that we can draw people into the kingdom. Let's not repel people anymore. Let's not turn them off and then say every tub have to sit on their own bottom. Yes, it is true. It is true, but we have to live right. We cannot be sleeping with somebody on Saturday or throughout the week and then tell them we're inviting them to church on Sunday. They will come. They will come, but in their mind, they're shaking their head and saying, how hypocritical, right? It cannot work. We cannot be cussing and telling our co-workers all sorts of nasty things yes christians cuss you have some people who say they're christians and they cuss cuss bad words too i'm not talking about little simple strong phrases bad words tell their friends and co-workers bad words and say they have a temper well as i said earlier if we're struggling in the same area, seek help. Seek help. Seek deliverance. It's there. The Lord knows. He knows. Now, this is not condemning anybody. It's just to say, look here. Jesus is coming and we need to fix up ourselves. Our lives need to count for something so that somebody else can be drawn to Christ. So let's cut out the other stuff that we're doing that does not bring God glory or does not draw people to him and see what a difference that will make. So let us live right. Let us stop this thing about people judging and going on like the holy. Holiness is God's standard. 
all right so let, let us stop trying to be comfortable in sin we 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 we, we excuse too much we we, we excuse too we have too many excuses in the body of Christ to live right. The Lord say, Holiness becometh his house. And if we're not living holy, then we're not pleasing God. Okay? So just had to drop that in for us to look at our ways, consider our ways as people of God. Let us consider our ways. Some of us sit down and we talk badly about our church brother and sister and then we come in to invite people into the same church to where to come to what you understand those things can't work nope we have to be consistent in our witness we have to be consistent just like how you have husband and wife they would have their differences and they have their problems and they work it out you know they don't go and tell the whole world we're fighting because you go and tell the world you're fighting somebody ready to pick up your spouse long time right so we 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 say to one another look we're having an issue let's sort it out we're gone on our job go and tell sue and susie and karen where sharon do and poor Sue, Susie, and Karen trying to be a Christian, looking for a church to attend. They say, well, me now go over your church, because your church full of problem and drama, right? No perfect church, you know, but because of the things that they're hearing, it's pushing them away. They, they, they don't want to come into that environment. They can enjoy that wherever they are already. So let's be careful of that. Christians who are, you know, discussing their fellow brethren, with unsaved people, right? We know we have issues and especially, well, I was going to say something that would maybe offend um, some women. So let me not say that, but I was going to say to the point, let me fix it up, that some women love to gossip too much, but some men gossip too. <laughs> so that's what I meant. That's what I meant because men do it too. You, you better believe it. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad indeed, but men do it too. So each of us has a, a part to play. If we say we are Christians, let us live right so that we can draw the unsaved to Christ. Time is short, people are dying, and they're going straight to hell if they don't know God. All right? So let us not play around with this issue and act as if it doesn't matter how we live as Christians. It does. Right? It does. It does matter. And we should care. We should care. We should care about people. Remember, some people may be shy about going to tell somebody about Christ, whatever. Well, we have to, some of us have to get out of the shyness, but our lifestyle can be that witness. So let's shape up, okay? So I'm going to pray now and really pray for family and friends of that young lady um, that passed away and, uh, you know, also the, the gentleman before um, you know, we're, we're just surrounded by, as they said, death is a part, a part of life. And it's not so much when, where, or, you know, how you die. It's, did you die in Christ? That's the important thing. Did you die in Christ? So let's answer that question before time changes into eternity we keep saying it some people think it's a joke it's not a joke okay these things can happen suddenly and we have to make sure that we are ready ready to meet our creator we we, we think about the fun that we're gonna have and we don't want to leave the fun to come to christ because we believe christianity is boring it is not when you really have a relationship with christ it is not boring at all. I love being a Christian. I love being a, a part of the family of God. I enjoy my Christianity, trials and all. Okay? I enjoy my walk with Christ, trials and all, because it's, it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but um, it, can be, it can be lived. With the Holy Spirit, it can be lived we can live for Christ all right if you fall if you make a mistake you repent confess and get up and move on again 
you, you don't stay there. You don't stay in that state. You don't stay in that condition. You don't practice sin. It is not, we who are saved, it is not a, a part of our life anymore to just follow after sin and dwell therein. We are changed. We are being transformed daily and we give ourselves over to Christ. We read God's word so that we can be strengthened. We pray, right? We fast. We commune with God. We develop a relationship with him. Some people are asking, how do I, how can I be saved? Okay? You, 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 first of all, you admit that you're a sinner. You admit that, look, Lord, I have done wrong. I, I know, I know, I was created in sin. But I know, oh God, that you have the power, right, to help me to change, to turn. So you admit that first of all. Then you have to believe, believe in Christ. Believe that, you know, from before the foundation of the, the world, the Lord had a plan for salvation. Because when Adam and Eve fell, he created a, a rift between us and God. And then he sent Christ to go between. Christ became that sacrifice because the, the blood, the blood of bulls and doves and all of that couldn't really do the work. So the Lord had a plan and he, a plan and he sent Christ. And Christ died and, and he died for our sins. He took our place. We are the ones that should have been crucified. But Christ took our place right on that cross and you know the word of god is saying believe on the work that christ did it's a finished work it's a finished work there's nothing we can add to that process it's finished all we have to do is accept it just accept it it's a gift to us we don't have to pay for it all right so if you see anybody selling gospel don't buy it do not buy it if you see the gospel being sold do not buy it i tell you because it's a free gift that was offered to us by god and then we confess we open our mouths and we confess lord i have sinned please forgive me i am now ready to walk with you all right and then it's so important that after you have made that decision that you follow the lord by attaching yourself to a bible believing church don't follow this thing about there are many ways to god and you know there are a lot of schools of thought out there but i said it in a previous video anything that leads you away from god reject that because it doesn't really matter because some people are they, they build their own religions they are they believe in themselves there are some um celebrities right now that people idolize so much that they have built churches around them so we have to be careful so we have to make sure that we're following the true and living god so attach yourself to a bible believing church where you can get the word and you're taught further you're taught you're 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 ministered to so that you can grow in the grace and in the knowledge of God. That's important, right? And that is why I admonished us as Christians earlier to live right. Because when people come into the body of Christ, they expect to see that standard of holiness. Yes, people just coming in, they know, then they, some of them know what they should be seeing. So let us demonstrate what a Christian should really be so that we can encourage one another okay and once you have made that decision so you don't need to wait to make that decision you don't need to wait until sunday so some people are planning okay when i go to church sunday i'm gonna do it you don't know if you have until sunday so that's why i'm saying do it now do that now and 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 be genuine be real about it if you if, you, if you're not genuine then you wouldn't reach very far in that process but it has to be genuine you will not drop off everything one time so that's where the Holy Spirit will come in and help you, okay? You will not drop off everything one time. Uh, I remember speaking to a young man a while back, and he, he was an avid smoker. He would pretty much use one cigarette to light the other one. 
and he would just smoke 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 when he wasn't smoking cigarettes he's smoking other things which shall remain nameless but i'm saying he had a problem with smoking and he he became he started attending a, a converts class and he pretty much reached the stage got baptized and was attending the church and then he started to like drop back and I saw him and I said to him what happened I'm not seeing you and he said bye sister Dan and this Christian thing too hard you know and he was just saying that it's a difficult road and he said I have a problem with smoking I can't stop I can't stop and I said to him look here you need to turn that smoking habit over to Christ. You know, you have to want to release that because that's the thing, you know, you have to want to give up these things. If you don't want to, that, that, well, you, you, can, you will not get far. You will not get far. Ask people who have been delivered from some really deep stuff and they will tell you that they got to a point where they were fed up of being fed up of the situation and they wanted that gone from their lives and they gave it over some people have strongholds right and they need deliverance but long and short the young man he said look here i cannot manage and he just stopped and i tried to encourage him as much as i could and he he just he, he said you know i i just can't do this i must smoke i cannot get away from the smoking and he stopped and I'll, I'll, that's not where the story ends so I didn't see him for a while it's like you know, he just wasn't around anymore I didn't see him and I saw him again recently and I was so you know I was so interested in knowing uh, what became of his whole you know uh, salvation <laughs> you know what 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 it is that he was doing now and he he said to me you know, say, me not smoke like that again, you know. You know, and well, from, from the way I'm saying it to you, you could tell already that it's a Jamaican. And he said, me not smoke like that again. And you know, say, from we have the conversation there. But talk to the father, you know. <laughs> and little by little, we just lose that kind of appetite and I said to him so what are you doing now what are you gonna do about your life now and he said well I want to come back you know I want to come back at church and so on but I, I, I pointed out to him how merciful God had been because during that time he could have been lost you know he could have just he could have been lost but he's at a stage now where he's getting a second chance by the Lord because you see the Lord knew where the struggle is and then it it was not until he was ready to give up because even though he was saying the Christian life hard he wasn't ready to give up smoking you know he, he really wasn't and he said it's after I start talk to the father you know well things start to change so that's the thing right so I really I know this is going very long this morning but I really want to encourage somebody who does not know the Lord come come to him as you are don't try to clean up yourself first come and then he will do the cleaning up right through the Holy Spirit there's a, 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 a popular um, a pastor preacher bishop in in Jamaica and if I say his name people know who he is but he always said church people must stop scale God fish <laughs> stop scaling God fish let the people come and the Lord will help to clean them up what we want to do we want to clean them up before they come we want to tell them how to dress how to how to this how to that and, and, and some of us who are telling people how to do this and that not even doing it ourselves uh, you see I, I'm telling you we, we, we got some issues we ourselves need some cleaning up alright so let us not scale God fish when these people come to God let us not look at them with disdain let us not scorn them let us allow the Holy Spirit to clean them up. We are responsible for modeling Christ before them, demonstrating Christ, living a life 
before them and watch them you know turn and transform we don't try to change them we don't we don't go with a stick over their head trying to beat them into submission and you know you're, you're better because some of the people who do that if you check their life sometime you you would maybe wonder because some people are good at that they're good at the the show they they want everybody to know that you know i'm i'm, I'm trying to bring this person to righteousness and no you allow the holy spirit to work on them all right so let's pray let's pray lord i thank you this morning for your goodness i thank you for your mercy and your grace oh god towards us you taught us in your word today that love should be our motivation love should be what drives us to do ministry love oh god should be at the forefront of why why we do what we're doing and lord today i ask you to let love reign among us let love reign among your body the church oh god help us to love one another because your word declares that they will know that we are christians by our love so lord i thank you today for giving us another opportunity to get it right to move into love oh god and move away from the other things that are not in line with love so i thank you today for somebody who will be transformed as a result of today's devotion as a result of today's encouragement lord i thank you and i give you praise lord right now i bring to you the families who are mourning the family and friends and colleagues of that young lady who passed away Lord, I pray that you will comfort them at this time. I pray, oh God, that you will give them peace because your word says that blessed are they that mourn, they shall be comforted. So even in this, their time of bereavement, Lord, I pray that you will surround them with your love. You will let them feel that warmth. You will give them that peace, oh God, that only you can give, Lord. Death is hard on families, on friends. But Lord, you ask us now, while we're alive, to make our calling and election sure. You're calling on us, Lord, to turn our lives totally and completely over to you before it's too late. So Lord, let not these deaths, and the young man as well, O oh God, comfort his family and friends. Let not these deaths go in vain but cause those who were closest to them who were not saved who are not saved to, to draw to you lord to run to you it's okay for them to run to you at this time and say lord save me so lord i thank you today that you are letting the peace flow throughout the virgin god community flow throughout the Tortola community, the BVI community on a whole, Lord, that has been experiencing these death after death after death, unprecedented death. So, Lord, help us to see you in it all. Help us to understand what you're saying to us, Lord. Help us, mighty God, not to miss you in this moment. Help us, O oh Lord. To say yes yes to your will and to your way so Lord I thank you today I thank you mighty God even for those who are on those who are here even now Lord I speak life into them that they shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord Lord I thank you today for your power that is moving us, O oh God, with every step that we take. We commit ourselves to you, Lord. We are not of our own or on our own. We, we are nothing without you. Nothing, Lord. So help us to turn our ways and our lives over to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us not leave this earth until we have accomplished your will and your purpose here mighty God so I thank you today I know that you hear and you answer prayer 
And today, Lord, I know that you will minister to somebody and somebody will say yes to you today, today, before it's too late. Lord, I thank you. Continue to teach us, Lord. Continue to speak. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. And as you speak, Lord, we will say only what you say. So, Lord, I thank you right now for what you have done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do in our lives because you're a good, good father. So we thank you now, Lord, for your provision, your protection, your guidance. We cannot do it without you. So I thank you, Lord, for your goodness today. Today, Lord, we commit ourselves to you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Yes, we went, we went a bit long today, but, you know, the Lord is good. And let us just serve him and serve him for who he is. Let us be motivated by love. Let us look at what is happening around us all over the world and pay attention. Okay? The, the, the times we're talking about last days and uh, some people believe that you know last days are a million days away yes they could be a million days away but hear what we will not be here that long <laughs> so our last days are upon us okay so let's get that part straight our last days are upon us so we need to be ready and we need to make our calling and election sure. We need to be ready that when that trumpet sounds, we know where we're going. All right. So God bless you. Morning again to all my friends, Angela, Ruth, Kelly. You know, nice having you, you, you on with us this morning. You know, those whose names scrolled up before, God bless you. And I will acknowledge your greeting a little later. So God bless you until we meet up again. All right. Take care.